too left, even if it means I'm lonely, but the other kids won't play with me. Today, I've got my own sandbox. Reconstruct memories and hand castles, collect seashells the shape of nostalgia, swim in my father's tears and wish she believed in the glory of a high tide, uncrumple my mother's broken down spine with seaweed that I stretched the sky and my first love is two baby crabs upside down that look like blood red hearts beating side by side. I could see her sitting at the edge of her skin, wanting to know more about who she is, so I asked her another question. What do you want to be when you grow up? She told me nothing. That she doesn't want to be anything, that she doesn't even know how to be herself. She told me that people who dream only end up sleeping their lives away, and that she's too old to stop smelling like empty rooms and fairy tale carcasses when she's only 21. Doesn't like to wrinkle so she doesn't smile, and often mistakes the shine of her hair for gray. It looks like midnight with the stars curling. Palestinian woman, let you shake your hips, mind them of your flesh and how mortal it is, they might have forgotten. Only I know the difference between sweat drop and tear. I see you dancing with wet cheeks, but smiling still, smiling you, Arabian queen. But I can I can feel you breaking. Remember, only I know the difference between shake and tremble. I promise they think you're dancing. I see you crave life, and I wish I knew how to do it like you. I used to believe in education. I have to remember that education is a privilege withheld from my ancestors' generations removed. Education is a privilege easily accessible for those in the higher class. Education costs money, but life lessons are invaluable. I had a year off from college. I had to look at myself again and ask, <coughs> why am I here? Live to learn, learn to live. But this wasn't a privilege. This is Egyptian hospitality, which you would be expected to give to a stranger lost and tired and wandering at 3 in the morning without anywhere to sleep. But as we watched a drug deal in the alley from 10 stories up, the doorman told me that if I had any interest in that or anything else illegal in Egypt, drugs, prostitution, whatever, I had nothing to fear as a white American the government would turn a blind eye. If you were caught, he could end up in the government building on the street, which later turned out to be the headquarters of some of the most feared torturers in the world. Because no matter where I go in life, I can have that music, those memories from home, and I can be comfortable. Like I said in the beginning, what I was looking for when I came to Dickinson was something as different from home as possible, <clears throat> a place to get different experiences. That's exactly what I found here at Dickinson. But with my iPod, with my music, with my memories, I was able, these past four years, I was able to make Dickinson my home and be comfortable here. Thank you. Or not to walk. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in a woman to suffer the slings and sorrows of that blind young archer, or fly to the arms of a host of troubles, and at the utterance of the word, and to walk, to stop. No more, and by this step we end the heartache and the thousand hopes and fears of those that suffer like me. To the consumption devoutly to be wished. To walk, to stop, to stop, perchance, in life. I went to an old girls' middle school and high school that demanded us to wear sneakers as part of our uniforms. Unfortunately, this is a cruel rule for the young, timid, impressionable, and fragile girl that I was then. Some girls could afford to buy all of the new Michael Air Jordan sneakers that came out in all different colors, and all I had was a pair of unpopular white Adidas and a pair of Skechers. They were cheaper than Air Jordans, that's for sure. This was a cruel, a cruel uniform rule that subjected me to the bottom of the social hierarchy at my school. But focusing on easing my parents' suffocating financial conditions was more of a priority to me than focusing on the blow to my self-esteem that resulted from the palace stairs and the ugly remarks that my sneakers and I had to endure with these girls.